Hey guys, it's Elijah here. Today we are playing Fleet of Facility. There's a new update. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell every time you notify when I upload some new videos. If you don't smash that like button in 10 seconds, then, um, What should I choose if you don't? But to give the thumbs up. The octopus is a really fascinating organism. The octopus is brain instead of just I know. If you don't hit that thumbs up button, I'm gonna slap your butt. Uh, uh. Sorry guys, I had a cold today, so so uh, I was very sick today, so I mean, I, I have been sneezing on the computer. Yep, I've been sneezing a lot. So, um, the first round I was beast, but Sometimes I um I am AFK at this game. I don't know how to play it on the computer because it's so it's so difficult. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just take a break and wait until it finishes. Oh, and also I'm gonna press the spectate button to see what's going on. Is created called RNA. RNA transfers. Okay, I'm spectating the beast. DNA to proteins. So the octopus have the amazing ability to edit their RNA. Thus, they can make new proteins. All of this ability isn't fully understood. Oh my god, she got one. Poor, poor one. Wait, what? How is she not striking the rope? She's such a too fat this game. Oh my god. Nine, I mean, eight minutes and 57 seconds until it ends. She just got two people. So, I'm going to wait for it to, to finish. One more computer. They have to hack the last one. She has a skeleton leg. That is so funny. 
Put in the comments below. Oh my god, that skeleton leg is funny. Show play more fleet of facility. She, you should see that one escaped. Wait, he's caught. The guy, the guy with her. This is a defining moment. Oh, wait, in my no. Professional life. I had this ability to just focus and die myself in. Wait, I what? Did not want to lose Why is she not? Oh, oh, oh. What? What? Waiting so consuming. She brought him outside. Or... Just so dialed in, it just wasn't pleasant. I told my dad after Super Bowl 14. Oh yeah, I need to so funny. I, I've had enough of this. And he says, "It's time to say that's your call. You've had enough. You've had enough." I said, "My dad, I said we're just gonna have to go back and do it again." And I said, "I just don't know. If I had the strength." <laughs> My dad's face, so I'm gonna be playing Fleet of Facility right now. Let's, let's do like a 10 more rounds and then we'll finish. Get away for it for the intermission. I don't know why the piece swap but Okay. So it is zero again. We're a survival. Why don't we let me, see, let me see how much chance I have. 39% chance to be the beast. Oh, I see so
After nearly retiring following Super Bowl XIV, Terry Bradshaw decided to continue his career. However, he never came close to another point. nearly the entire season. I couldn't even go to the game. And I should go to the game. I, I went a couple of times to talk to him. There's a guy out there playing my position. No. And he's killing me. Get me out of here. And then I had a coach that not here. He's not on the team. We're not talking about it. Chuck said, I, there's nothing I can do about Bradshaw at this moment of time. So I have to focus on the team. And put kind of bread on the shelf over here. But I think I wanted Chuck to say, boy, we really need you again. You should take your time. Get well. Whatever you've got to do, get well. You're a guy. I mean, that makes me pretty insecure. But, but I, you know, what I am. That's when we started in the papers, see? That's when no Bradshaw started flashing. After a season of public feuding with his coach, Bradshaw made his long-awaited return in week 15. He threw for two touchdowns to help the Steelers secure a playoff spot. Terry Bradshaw, and zipping that 10-yard touchdown throw that Calvin Swinney came off in pain. Bradshaw re-injured his elbow and wouldn't throw another NFL pass. The following summer, at the age of 35, he was officially done. When I retired, I was relieved. That's why people say, you miss it. I don't miss it at all. I remember one quote I made. I said, well, now I can be myself. I don't have to be uh, hardline or serious. I don't want to be serious. What? I never want to be serious again the rest of my life. I hate serious. It's no fun being serious. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is for me to welcome you. Less than two months after his retirement, Bradshaw began a new career. <laughs> you know, I really never thought I could have butterflies so big in my belly. At that point, 1984, I'm not sure there was anyone that would say, this guy is going to be an entertainment icon, a sports entertainment icon. Hello, folks. I'm Terry Bradshaw. After 10 seasons at CBS, <laughs> Bradshaw helped launch a new NFL broadcast. Program. 75 years of national football days being played. This is our first day. We are proud to have you here. Can't go to respect the guys and wait. And we wanted to kind of rethink the idea of the pregame that it all started with Terry. This show is big. And the emphasis on being more natural, more conversational. And I think one of the reasons why I work is because we're not rehearsed. You can't rehearse, Terry. This is Highway Long, eight time uh, pro bowler. Bradshaw had become part of a new family and cut ties with an old one. For nearly two decades following his retirement, he would keep a distance from Chuck Knoll, the Steelers, and the city of Pittsburgh. When I left Pittsburgh, it was difficult. It was difficult to go out the way I went out. I was angry. That guy next to oh my car, she was. I didn't want to face those people. Pittsburgh. That guy and next to the girl. No she, he's like growing up. Space. So and going in circles, baby. Instead of having a member of the Steelers introduce him. Oh my God, they just put up. Mr. Terry Bradshaw. Oh no, they're, they're next to and each other. <clears throat> Another teammates and or for Chuck, you know, and so the local media took me to pass over that. Art Rooney. Bradshaw had always been close to Steelers owner Art Rooney. Well, I love that man. Yet when Rooney died, Bradshaw did not return to Pittsburgh for the funeral. I always put it on me. I'm the one that had to grow up. I'm the one that had to make the adjustment. I would never, ever want anybody to think that I did it right. I did it wrong. But that was the way I handled it. 
things back then. Maybe, maybe in the healing room. I don't know. I, I know one thing. If I hurt people feeling the way that I had, I apologize. I didn't. It's just, I just didn't know how to handle it. Bradshaw prepared for his first public return to a Steelers game in nearly two decades. His two daughters accompanied him on the trip. We never talked about the Steelers or that awkward tension that Dad felt that was there. And Dad said, "This is my homecoming. I've been back in two decades, and I don't know if they're gonna if they boo us, then we're gonna run off the field." And I was just so confused. I just remember us sitting there, and I had never been to Pittsburgh and been around my dad with his fans. And they're either going to do you or they're gonna love you. Absolutely, I think there was a lot of nerves. He was holding our hands on the sidelines and dad's hands were like this big, and just sweating and shaking. And I, I just didn't know, okay, I hope this is gonna be awesome because I don't really know how he's gonna react if it's not. Oh my God, the, the beast is, he, he caught the last guy. No, don't get him, no. Don't you dare capture him. I'll never forget when we stood out there. <clears throat> oh, the
Experiencing the pain of three divorces, he married Tammy in 2014. This is your show, your champion, Barbie. He showed her. I now get what marriage really should have been like in the first place. She needs to be your best friend, and so thank God I finally got that part right. I married my best friend. Hey, Quincy. There are still hard days for Bradshaw. Hey, Biff. Hey, buddy. Years ago, he revealed that through much of his life, he suffered from depression. He's so sweet. Something he still deals with today. You ain't cute on paper, I know that thing. I know when it's coming, we feel it. The people out there that deal with this understand it. I would say in the last two years, it's not come about as much. If it shows up now, it might be for a day or two. And I can see it coming because... Literally, you can see it in the eyes. It's like, I'm, you're looking at me, but you're not really there. It's almost like he just goes someplace else. And as much as I want to reach in and pull him back, I, I learned I can't. I kind of have to step back and just let the wave roll through. As Bradshaw moves forward, he still confronts painful reminders of the past. <laughs> His feelings toward Chuck Moore remain complicated. I miss my coach. I love my coach. I miss Chuck Moore. In 2003, Bradshaw publicly made a name to his former coach. A decade later, he drew criticism for not attending Noel's funeral. I'm not a funeral guy. I don't mean this in disrespect, but just who I am, okay? Bad, good, indifferent, doesn't matter. Um, is it the right thing to do? Well, what's right for me? Is, what is, what do I feel? There's a lot of unanswered questions as to what? our relationship. Let him rest in peace. As a football coach, he was just incredible. I moved on with my life, pushed way past all of that. It keeps being lost that time. I have really admiration for Jack. I think he's probably one of the most misunderstood still of all time. I think first of all, Terry has a good heart. He's a good person. I think second, there's a lot of scars and Terry's the kind of guy who you don't forget. Have there been ups and downs in Terry's life? Absolutely. But I think the difficult times sharpen you and hone who you are uh, as much as anything. And Terry survived all that. During his career, Bradshaw survived the hurt of being called a dumb quarterback. He then spent decades perpetuating the image. When people have a perception, just take it and make it work for you. I can play a buffoon, I can be an idiot, I can be silly. You already think I am fine, I was at the park. Oh, he says it all the way to the back. All the way to the back. Hee haw! What? Lucky week 13. Lucky week 13 came out here on the 13th set on flight 13th. I said mean, in seat 13th. No, no, it, it's flight 13, seat 13, and you flew out on the 13th. You too? <laughs> People have bought that hook line since he's one of the smartest people I've ever been around. To say he has gone well beyond where I think people perceived him to be would be an understatement. I think one thing I learned about him that maybe the public doesn't see as much of is he is a very wise man. Let me go there. He's a very wise 
this man. You know, you can have book sense, be intelligent, and know everything from a book standpoint. But to, for me to be wise is a much broader sense. It's experience, it's knowledge, like kind of like an old soul, very wise. And I love that about him too. And I saw a gun from a black dude. The old soul remains young at heart and shows no signs of slowing down. The crowd go crazy. I don't think I've ever seen him as busy like, as he is now. He doesn't want to be done. He doesn't want to fall off the map. But I think he's that's kind of his proof of like, I can do it and I want to do everything that I can and have as much fun as I can. Who decides this stuff? Here I'm doing football on television. I'm ranching here, raising cows, raising horses. Got a great wife, beautiful kids, grandkids. And then I get, let's go sing. I'm doing the Opry. Grand Ole Opry, do my third time. It's fun. I'm not very good. But they'll let me go in there and sing. And then I can tell you, what are you going to do, Eternal? I just got to do the Grand Ole Opry. Okay, I can't find her, guys. Alright, guys, I'm gonna end this video. Bye.